Welcome everyone. My name is Sean Jones and I'm the CEO of the iNetrapreneur Network. And today I have with me an incredible dynamic individual. She is all about helping not just people in a, in a small location, she is about helping individuals on a very global scale, whether it's on a personal level or a professional level. She has a story that is unlike any other. Her name is Jackie Simmons. Jackie, welcome. Thank you, Sean. And thank you for interviewing me and having me be part of this group. I'm very touched by both what you and Robert have shared and what you all are doing in the world. Well, Jackie, I I'm going to jump right into it because, you know, our time is limited and there is so much to share about you. But before I move into what you're actually doing, our audience always loves to get to know the person behind any business, you know, kind of the, a little bit about the insight of who is Jackie Simmons? Who is Jackie Simmons? That was a question I struggled to answer most of my life. I'm the youngest of four girls. I'm the child of a school teacher and an army sergeant with a preacher as a grandparent. So I had people telling me, I mean, if you've got older sisters, you might understand. I had people telling me what to do, what to think, and what to believe from the moment I was born. So figuring out who Jackie was, was a journey. And it's only been in the last two years when I had my identity really challenged by one of my own children. It was August 3rd, 2019. And my middle daughter, Stephanie, 37 years old, part of my speaker program, we were having our showcase. Everybody was doing a seven minute message that matters. And Stephanie came to the front of the room and started her seven minute talk with a startling statistic. And as proud as I was of her as her instructor, her statistic was 3000 a day. That's the number of teenagers who will attempt to take their own lives just mm -hmm. in the U.S. I went totally pale. I'm in the back of the room. If I could have fallen over, I would have because I had no idea the number was that high. And I had no idea suicide was her topic. Her next sentence was when I was 14 and she publicly shared a story that we had lived together, but had not really talked about. Matter of fact, she shared, she hadn't really talked about it outside of professional health. And just when I thought that the world could swallow me up and it would be okay, she shared that she still struggled with suicidal thoughts. Wow. And I went from pale to bone cold as I faced the reality of the struggles my daughter had faced alone because I had not had the courage to have the talk about suicide with her. I was afraid. I was afraid for me, afraid that whatever she told me that was causing her so much mental and emotional pain that she would think dying was better than living, that I wouldn't be able to handle it. I've survived two bouts of depression at this point. It was like, I'm not sure I can do this. And I was afraid of putting the idea back into her, her, into her head. So I had mm -hmm. sold myself on the idea that as long as she was getting professional help, we didn't need to talk about it. There are so wow. many myths in that story. It's a myth that you can put a thought inside someone's head. It's not possible. Think about how many times you've tried to get your kids to brush their teeth on time or do anything. You cannot put a thought in someone's head, but I had bought into the myth. Professional help is really good. Intervention is amazing. And it is one of the reasons my daughter is still alive and it's not enough. Because what came out of that day, Stephanie and I decided to work together. <laughs> Who knew that was possible? Along with her two sisters, we created the Teen Suicide Prevention Society. And we went on a journey to try to figure this out. because. If 3,000 teens are attempting every day, 6,000 parents every day are starting to live the guilt nightmare that I had lived. And suicide, you know, the thoughts, I call them the dark thoughts, those, those little demons that creep up into our shoulders that they, they lie on, uh, they, they creeps up into our minds and lies on our shoulders. You know, it, it's, it's terrible. 
And a lot of this, a lot of the teens, you know, suicide, the depression also comes from outside influences. I mean, you hear about the bullying in school or the shaming okay. in school that, that Pause. coincides. <laughs> I have to, I have to say, okay, that's mythology. That okay. is not true. Just like I can't put a thought in my daughter's head, nothing outside of me can influence my behavior if I do not give it permission. Nothing outside of me can influence my definition of who I am, which is how we started this conversation. Now that I understand how to be in the center of my own life. And that's the journey I went on with my daughters with the Teen Suicide Prevention Society, which, by the way, we call Teaspoons, T-S-P-S, because it's so much easier to say. So at Teaspoons, we started going, wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa. These negative thoughts that people get stuck in their heads, what we call the negative echo chamber. Why do they get stuck in some people's heads and not others? Suicide intervention programs that kick in when you know someone's at risk or they've had a previous attempt are trying to solve the puzzle of what stops people. How do you stop people from taking their lives? We decided to look at a different question. What will it take to stop suicidal thinking from getting stuck? inside someone's head. So we went the route of positive psychology, neuroscience, at pattern interrupts. Thank you, Robin, uh, Tony, Tony Robbins. Um, and thank you, Robin Williams. Yeah. Because what pissed me off the most, and I didn't even know I was angry, was this mythology around what really happens when one person takes their own life. It used to be considered a crime against the village because while I cannot put a thought in your head, your subconscious mind will accept the actions of others as being acceptable. So when one person takes their own life, the village becomes more at risk of other people following suit, not because they set a bad example, but because the subconscious mind accepts it as acceptable if you know someone. And thanks to media, we all know someone. We all know a gifted comedian, a talented singer, a celebrity chef. And I did a rant that if you're a celebrity, I don't think you have the right to take your own life. I really believe that you do a disservice to everyone who has followed you if you do. And so you either step up, get the help you need, get the interventions you need, or for the sake of our culture, step back. Get out of the limelight. Mm -hmm. Anything else is a crime in my mind. It, it really I'm is. We actually have, Jackie, and this is actually near and dear, and it's not, not something that we talk about, but our um, oldest son, he does have depression. He, he's clinically diagnosed. We, he has a lot of, he has a team of professionals that work all the time with him. So we, we do, we invest in him because he needs it. And he does have the depression. Um, he's, he's had those really dark thoughts and thought it would be easier note to no longer be here. When he had a friend in high school who did commit suicide, he, it really took him into a whole new space. And we, everybody's like, no, you can't, you can't buy into this. And it was tough. I mean, he's, he's, oh. I can't say he's recovered because he still struggles, but and it's so much better than what it you, was. You just hit upon exactly what the biggest problem is with most intervention programs. Are you ready? Ready. They try to take suicide off the table as an option. And they say, you can't do this. You, you don't. And have you ever tried to take your cell phone back from a two-year-old? <laughs> what do they do? Mine, mine, mine. Fine. And the same thing happens in everybody's brain when you try to take an option away. We will fight harder not to lose something than we will fight to gain something. It's the way that we're wired. And that's why the journey into neuroscience and positive psychology has been such a game changer for me, not just for the work we do at, the, at Teaspoons, but for what I do in my business and for how I show up and stand up now when I used to be afraid to let people get to know me because I thought if you got to know me, you would not want to work with me. You would see the mental and emotional trash in my own head from my own depressive thoughts and tendencies 
or you would see that dark stain of me being the mother of a suicidal teenager. Remember, I come from an evangelical preaching background. This is not acceptable from a military background, which has a really high rate of suicide. We have lost more military personnel, both active and retired, to suicide than we have to war on battlefields throughout history. And no one talks about it. So we've been on a mission to break the silence and to go, hey, most of what you know about suicide, most of what you know about depression in my world is all mythology. The reality is when you can be full of yourself, what we were told not to be as children, when you can be full of yourself and in the center of your own life and let people get to know you, what you're going to find is that what you're doing is giving them permission to do the same to let themselves fully express, to let them be who they are. Total self-acceptance, radical self-acceptance is the cure and radical self-expression is the cure. And just like my right to swing my hand stops where your nose begins, my right to self-express doesn't require you to listen. And this is why bullying and all of this shaming and all of this stuff that they are attributing to the low self-esteem is nothing more than BS. It is a belief system that doesn't stand the test of a microscope. If you are full of yourself and you fill yourself with positivity every day, and trust me, we have tools that help people do that now. We've got ways that make it really easy. We've got things that work in three minutes. We've got things that work in two minutes. And we have games you can play with your kids that build emotional intelligence and resilience and agility with cards, playing card games. So we've been on this journey to gather these resources because what we know is that when you are full of your own joy, love, and divine energy, whatever that is for you, What other people say and do says a lot about them and nothing about you, nothing. So then other people's judgments, opinions, and expectations, we call it riding an elephant named Joe, other people's judgments, opinions, and expectations stay just that, other people's. People's, yes. That's incredible. Throughout history. Throughout history, brilliant people have tried to explain this. Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare said, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And one of the greatest philosophers, and I love to tell you that it was Socrates or Aristotle or Epictetus, but it was one of those three. And when someone came to him and told him about the insult that had been given him by someone else, his response was classic and timeless. Wow, they must not know me very well if this is all they can find fault with me. They missed all of these other things that are wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Their observations and opinions and expectations and judgments had zero impact on him. He already knew his own flaws. He was self-aware enough to knew to know where he wasn't perfect. Cool. If you're trying to be perfect, other people's judgments, opinions, and expectations will hit you really hard, like a stone or a brick or, or a stick. But if you are self-aware and you love yourself and accept yourself for who you are right now, Other people's judgments, opinions, and expectations have zero impact. They slide off. We call it being coated with emotional Teflon. I love it. Nothing, (laughs) Jackie. I I love. Oh my gosh, I love what you're what you're saying here. And you know, there is a lot that has to do with the mindset. And Mm -hmm. you know, so I I love it, Jackie. You have so much to offer. You know, the the cards and the programs, and you speak on stage. You and your daughter, and, and you're doing this. To me, I call it a movement. I could be wrong, but that's really what it is. It's an aware awareness movement mm-hmm. for suicide. And how? What is the name again of your organization? Let, let's say it loud and proud. The nonprofit is. They can find it at teaspoons.org. The the full name 
Teen Suicide Prevention Society. And we are not about suicide prevention and intervention. We are about you becoming an advocate for living, an advocate for your own life, an advocate for the people you love. It's not about waiting for signs because we think that's looking for trouble. We think you just start being an advocate now. We've got free resources on the website. My TED Talk is on the website there. People can go and watch that. And we have a gift for everyone that builds emotional self-awareness and positivity in three minutes a day. And so we have that gift for everyone too. Well, Jackie, I want to thank you so much for your time. I know this was just a short little interview, but it was so impactful because everything that you said uh, is, is designed to get you to think, to start talking. Let's just go there. Let's just start talking. Ask those questions. Dive into it. Look at it. You know, it's not a bad thing. It is all about the awareness. I, I love what you're doing. You're also one of our speakers coming up at the Art of Connection Summit, which is a, a global summit online, March 31st. So people who, when they come, they're going to actually get to hear more from you because you're on stage speaking. Uh, you're going to be hosting some workshops and, and you know, providing resources and you're gonna be given some nuggets away that people can go, I've been looking for this. I didn't know I need this. So Jackie, I wanna thank you so much for your time. And I wanna thank you in advance for being one of our experts in the area of connection. Thank you.